Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Roberto Del Sanno. Today I will tell you about the most expensive ancient coin sold in the world. And it was sold at Roman Numismatics in London in 2020. It was a Brutus Aureus, one of the killers of Julius Caesar. But first I will give you a short historical background. Enjoy! Julius Caesar has become known as one of the most successful generals and conquerors in the world history. The military success and his political talent gave him the support of the people and the army. His power base rested on the alliance with Rome's richest man Crassus and Rome's hitherto chief general and army commander Pompey the Great. This alliance was forged in 60 BC and has gone down in history as the first triumvirate. His military career was impressive and his conquests were unparalleled in Roman history. After the siege and the final victory over the Gauls led by Vercingetorix at the Battle of Alesia in 52 BC, Gaul was pacified. However, the price was enormous for the Gallic people. Caesar had oppressed 300 tribes captured 800 cities and taken 1 million prisoners to sell as slaves and at least as many had been killed in the war. After the Gallic War, the Senate demanded that Caesar disbanded his army and appeared as a civilian private individual in Rome to stand trial for his many war crimes. Of course, he could not accept this and in January 49 BC the Senate made its final decision. A Senatus Consultum Ultimatum was issued, which placed the Republic in a state of emergency and Caesar was in effect an enemy of the state. When he crossed the Rubicon River on January 10th, which was the border river to Italy itself, it was the beginning of the civil war that the Romans had long feared. The Roman Senate, under the leadership of Pompey, were several prominent and well-known senators such as Brutus, Cicero, Cassius and Cato fled Rome to consolidate their power base in Greece. Caesar quickly followed and greatly inferior in number, Caesar defeated Pompey and his allies against all odds in the Battle of Pharsalus on August 9th, 48 BC. Pompey then escapes alone with his family to Egypt where he is murdered and his head is served on a platter to the persecuting Caesar. After a short but intense and spectacular romance with the Egyptian Queen Cleopatra, he returns to Rome. Julius Caesar is now the undisputed ruler and most powerful man in the Roman Empire. The title of dictator, which gave Caesar royal powers in an extreme crisis situation. He had first been assigned by the Senate with the time limit, then indefinitely and finally on his own initiative for life. This, together with an improvised but failed coronation attempt in the Forum Romanum on the 15th of February 44 BC, became the drop that made the goblet overflow. On this scenario, which was minted by Monnier L. Emilius Bucca during Julius Caesar's last month in life, February to March 44 BC. On the obverse, Caesar is depicted wearing a laurel wreath and in the inscription we can read Caesar dict perpetui, which translates into Caesar dictator for life. A conspiracy was formed with Cassius taking the lead. In the end, it was agreed to strike openly during the Senate hearings on March 15, 44 BC. Caesar apparently misjudged the situation in Rome or could not take them seriously. He was exhausted after many campaigns over almost 14 years in a row and was also increasingly plagued by epileptic seizures. He thought no one would dare to attack him, so he did not bother to have a bodyguard either. When the assassins pushed forward and chased after him, he tried at first, and with great surprise, to defend himself, 
while he exclaimed, What are you doing? Let me go. This is violence. Just before Brutus thrust his dagger into Caesar, he is said to have exclaimed the now famous words, Et tu Brute, which translates into, Even you, my Brutus, before he pulled the toga over his head and sank down to the floor, bleeding from 23 stab wounds. The rest of the Senate dispersed in panic. No one listened to the conspirators' cries of, The tyrant is dead, long live the Republic. The attack became a blow in the air. After the assassination of Julius Caesar, the senator stands hesitant and uncertain what to do and allow themselves to be persuaded by Caesar's right-hand man, Mark Antony, to give a speech before the people. He promises not to attack the killers directly, but says he will calm the people. But he must nevertheless condemn the murder. The audience is of course hostile as their hero just have been murdered. And everything is of course a political fox game. This speech to the people is one of history's most interesting rhetorical concepts. Beginning with friends, romans, countrymen, let me borrow your ear. The original idea of allowing the killers to be granted amnesty was crushed when the people were set on fire and they were forced to flee to Greece. A new power struggle took place between the two groups where Mark Antony and Caesar's adopted son Octavian stands on one side and Marcus, Junius Brutus and Gaius Cassius Loginus as their opponents. In Greece, Brutus and Cassius are now preparing for the decisive battle that they know must come. During this period, several different coin types are issued by both Brutus and Cassius. The coins are struck at the mobile mint moving with their army, and on the coins various military and religious motives are depicted. But also the most iconic Roman coin in world history are issued, which has also become the most expensive ancient coin sold at an auction. On the obverse of this coin, Brutus is depicted, and on the reverse, the liberty cap is depicted between two daggers symbolizing the murder weapons. The coin is interesting for several reasons, partly because Brutus shamelessly depicts himself. Only a few years earlier, Caesar had been heavily criticized when he himself had depicted him on his own coins. In addition, Brutus unbashedly propagates that he has murdered his opponent and makes the world understand that he has done his duty as a noble Roman senator who protected the Roman Republic against Caesar. Below the murder weapons on the reverse, Brutus has also written the day of the murder, Aid Mar which is an abbreviation of Aedibus Martis, which is mid-March. The coin represents something that is unparalleled in the world history, as Brutus depicts the murder weapons and the day the murder of Caesar was committed, and also spreads this propaganda coin over the eastern part of the Roman world. On October 29th, 2020, this fantastic coin was sold by Roman numismatics in London. This coin was part of Baron Dominique de Chambrier's collection. The coin was in a fantastic quality and was graded as almost mint state. And this is the third known specimen in the market. Another specimen is in the Deutsche Bundesbank collection. And the third specimen, which is perforated, is on a long-term loan to the British Museum. The coin was valued at £500,000 and the bidding started a bit tentatively at £400,000 and the bidding went on relatively quickly up to £700,000 where it stood and waited for a while. Then the bidding continued for almost five minutes to finally be hammered for the new record price at £2,700,000. The new record price at Roma Numismatics auction in London apparently made the owners want to sell the coin that has been on a long-term loan since 2010 in the British Museum. 
The coin was sold at Numismatica Ars Classicas auction in Switzerland in May 2022. The coin was valued at 750,000 Swiss francs and was finally hammered for 2,200,000 Swiss francs. The final crucial question that we are probably thinking a lot about is which coin would you choose yourself? Specimen number one sold at Roman Numismatics for 2.7 million pounds or specimen number two sold at Numismatica Ars Classica for 2.2 million Swiss francs. Let me know what you think and leave your comments in the feed below. Thank you.